Hi again, everybody. Jim Thompson alongside Evan Massoud. Welcome to this telecast of Dartmouth High School football. Tonight, the Hilltoppers of Durfee High School in town to take on Dartmouth High School. Evan, the records are opposite one another. Dartmouth comes in with a forward in one record, Durfee at one and four. You know a lot about the Hilltoppers? Give us a quick synopsis. Well, it's been a tough go of it for Durfee this year. You know, right now the injury bug is really plaguing them. Uh, they lost a number of guys against Barnesville two weeks ago in a game that, I have to tell you, they really surprised me. They went heel to heel with Barnesville, a ranked team. Uh, so last week, you know, the wheels kind of fell off a bit coming out of shutoff against BR. Uh, but before that, really good three weeks um, in non-conference play. They did beat Somerset, that's their lone win uh, in week three, but the first two weeks were winnable games marred by a couple mistakes. Well, that happens in high school football, unfortunately. Dartmouth, the wheels came off last week as they went up to uh, Brockton and lost to uh, Brockton by a score of 42 to 20. And in that game, Dartmouth was just outclassed. The athletic performance of uh, the running backs and wideouts for Brockton was too much for Dartmouth to uh, overcome, and they really steamrolled the Indians in that ball game. So, we should have a good one here tonight. Evan and I will be right back with tonight's opening kickoff in just a moment. Addison Caterley. Assisted by Marla Cohen and Tracy Higgins. Cheerleader supervised by Rebecca Braga. Band led by student conductors Lauren Sullivan, Erin Thatcher, and Lexi Arruda. Dartmouth High School is proud to present the Dartmouth High School Marching Band. The band will perform the following music for pregame. Robin Hood, Fight, Our Boys Will Shine, and Glory to Dartmouth.
Tonight at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium is Dartmouth Youth Football League Pop Warner Night. The Dartmouth Youth Football League is led by President Chris Pereira and board members David Charest, Athena Cosmos, Kim Mills, Kyla Noons, Sam Bellavines, and Kelly St. Lawrence. Please join me in welcoming the Dartmouth League, the Dartmouth Youth Football League cheerleaders, coaches, and then the individual teams. First are the Dartmouth Indian cheerleaders made up of the Tiny Mites, Junior Pee Wee, Pee Wee, and Varsity. Next are the Dartmouth Youth Football League teams. First are the six and under Dartmouth Indians. Then it's the eight and under Dartmouth Indian. Next is the ten and under Dartmouth Indians. The 12 and under Dartmouth Indians. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, the 14 and under Dartmouth Indians. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, how about a nice round of applause for our Pop Warner Youth Football cheerleaders and players. And now here are the starting lineups for your Dartmouth High School Indians. At center, number 50, senior Dan Martin. At right guard, number 55, senior T.J. Pickering. At right tackle, number 75, senior Paca Souza. At left guard, number 52, senior Ben Pino. At left tackle, number 62, junior Chase Lackey. At quarterback, captain number four, Will Kelly. At running back, number 22, senior J.J. Esterlin. At running back, number 34, Captain Ethan Marks. At running back, number 18, senior Will Chow. At wide receiver, number 13, Captain Baron Dutra. And at the other wide receiver, junior, number one, Dylan Gomes. Your officials for tonight.
with the littles. Hello again, everybody. Jim Thompson alongside Evan Massoud, and we welcome you to this telecast of Dartmouth High School football tonight. The Durfee High School Hilltoppers out of Far River, Mass, come into town to take on the Dartmouth High School Indians. Dartmouth High School 4-1 and one coming into this ball game. Last week, uh, a lackluster effort up in Brockton. Uh, they were pretty much manhandled by a score of 42-20, to 20, which was their first loss of the season. On the other hand, Durfee comes in here uh, limping uh, as well. Uh, with a total uh, overall record of one win against four losses. And last week, they played uh, Bridgewater Raynham and uh, lost by a whopping score of 41 to nothing. So this should be a pretty good game. This Durfee, uh, as Evan will tell you in a moment, uh, they've had the injury bug, uh, which has led probably to some of their losses. And tonight, Dartmouth's whole left side of their uh, offensive line, they're not playing. But... That's just how uh, football is. So, Evan, welcome to the broadcast. Great to have you alongside. Yeah, great to be here, Jim. Thanks. And uh, thank you for all you do in covering other sports through the week for uh, uh, Dartmouth Media. We, uh, we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, you're from Far River. You know, give me 15 seconds who to watch, people at home. Well, for the Hilltoppers, they'll have Isaiah Thomas starting. He's a senior. A lot of seniors on this roster. They've played together this core group. Um, since they were in youth football when they made it to national championships in Florida. It's about six or seven years ago. So this group is a tight group. Expectations were high coming into the year. Unfortunately, the record is not indicative of how they've played in a lot of their games. Last week, tough one, but the first two weeks for Durfee, winnable games, as I said in the open, basically marred by a couple mistakes here and there, but they easily could have a winning record right now. All right, let's take this time out to honor this wonderful country of ours. It's the Dartmouth High School Marching Band in our national anthem. Marching Band under the direction of Mr. Ian Flynn. Oh, say can you see bright the dawn's early Stripes and bright stars, where our last fight, where the hearts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red Another wonderful pregame show by the Dumb High School Marching Band. Doc Noons, public address announcer, sitting alongside as well, waving hello to everyone. We're live on YouTube, Evan. We're around the world. What do you think of that? <laughs> it's, you know, technology has saved us uh, so much, particularly over the last 18 months uh, with the live streaming, being able to bring these games to parents when there were no fans allowed. Uh, it's, it's really amazing how quickly uh, things have changed in terms of the technology and how it's being used. I know for me and Fall River, same thing. We started live streaming last year and it, it, it's amazing how how different and how much faster we can get things out to the public now. Well, the Indians will receive the uh, opening kickoff. 
we get set to call all the action. Paul Santos and Andrew Thompson, both the way on vacation. Andrew down uh, playing a little bit of golf down in the Carolinas. And I think they just put Paul Santos up. We put him on ice for the upcoming playoffs, Evan. No, he was down with his wife. He was in Florida. And uh, we miss Paul. He's a, not only a good friend, but uh, like Evan, an excellent uh, broadcaster. Much appreciated by the folks here in the town of Dartmouth. Even Paul though Evan's from Far River, it's okay. No, it's okay. Paul's a lot of fun. He had me on his uh, on his show back in March, and uh, that was a lot of fun, let me tell you. He wants to have me back in November, too, so looking forward to seeing Paul again soon. Well, no offense, I was on that, too, so don't, don't take it to heart. Oh, that, boy. You know, yeah, they let anybody on that show, trust <laughs> me. Well, did you watch mine, though, I, my appearance? I did, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't miss it. Paul Santos Live. I watch it on, uh, on tape. I, I tell him we should call it Paul Santos Tape. Yeah. <laughs> so the Hilltoppers get set to kick it away. Just underway here from the stadium. Large crowd here on the home side. Shot end over end kick. And it comes down here to the near side. And it's Patrick Drain. He breaks the tackle at the 40. He's got midfield. And he's down in the Durfee territory. Run across the boundary at about the 47-yard line where the Indians will have it first and 10, starting in good field position. Will Kelly, the senior quarterback, in the backfield be J.J. Erskelin, Ethan Marks, and Will Chow. Ethan Marks is quite a runner. It will be first and 10 for the He's old school. He, he likes to hit. He's one of the few high school kids that really likes contact. And so, to note, too, for Durfee, uh, kicker was Anthony Carrere, a freshman, uh, filling in for Anasio, who's out uh, for the last couple weeks here. Here's Estelin, gets down to about the Durfee 30 yard line where he takes a whack, and he's run out of bounds, but a large gain on first down to pick up a first down as Estelin took the jet sweep. Yeah, I mean, really, it was a seamless handoff, and he got past the line before, really, before anybody could even get there. So, because he was in motion as the as the ball was snapped, so you know you get that burst of speed before the snap. It makes a big difference. You're not just starting from a dead stop. First and ten, Indians. Just like that, Esterlin out. So personnel change right away. Switching it up. Here's Marks. Had an outstanding season thus far for the Indians. Might have picked up a yard. Actually, they're going to mark him back one. Second down and just over 10. Just underway here from the stadium. You know, defensively for Durfee, you know, Jeffers is a, he's a big presence there. 5'9", 240 for Durfee. He's a junior. As well as um, Ben Halliday and Rafael Vasquez, uh, 74, or 76 and 74. If they can lock up the middle, that's going to be a big key for the Hilltoppers to stop the run. Well, here's Kelly, Kelly running it up the middle off the ball fake. He cracks inside the 25-yard line. The Hilltoppers getting some of those guys back this week who were injured and actually kind of tripped up. Looks like Kelly actually lost his footing on the pile there, so maybe not necessarily a tackle, just kind of got tangled up. Jose Cruz got, got the credit for the tackle. It'll be third down and a short four here for the Indians. First drive of the ball game. This is Esterlin, squares his shoulders, has the first down and more still on his feet. Down to the 10 yard line, Indian first down. Dartmouth in the red zone, Jim, and you know, for the Hilltoppers, they played from behind a lot this season and to get out, um, get off the field defensively here quickly would do, you know, do worlds for them, but for Dartmouth as well, coming back off of uh, the loss last week, you know, they want to score first and play their game. It's amazing what a difference Right, when you score first, how, how the mindset changes from nope. team to team. No question. Here's Marks the touchdown the maker, Marks, bowls his way inside the five. Getting up off the bottom of the pile was Devon Moore. The Indians have it at the doorstep of the Hilltoppers on their initial drive of the ball game. Two yards for the first. They need four for the end zone. Here's Kelly up the ball fake. And he'll waltz in for the first touchdown of the ball game. From the four-yard line, Will Kelly gets the Indians on the scoreboard first. And with 9.31 to go 
Here in the opening quarter, the Indians take their initial drive and knock it in for a touchdown. That didn't take long, uh, two minutes and 29 seconds, and Kelly kept it himself. Wide open right side, kind of faked, the juke, faked his cut in just enough to make the line cut across, and it opened up that right side. Jared Ash, extra is point good. is up and through. I think, uh, Evan, that landed in the Stang parking lot. Had a little extra juice on that one. Clock is stopped here at the stadium with nine minutes and 31 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Is it an Indian crowd? They're all happy. Their team's on top, seven to nothing. Oh, yeah. Great crowd tonight. You know, it, much like, you know, at any of the other surrounding, you know, high schools here in the South Coast, the fans always come out, particularly for Friday night football. Uh, but these stands here, every time I come here for Dartmouth, I'll tell you, for DCTV, these stands are always jammed. Far side, though, Durfee travels well, too. The uh, their, their student cheering section on the far side of the field as well has showed up in some costumes as well, kind of answering. You see Dartmouth, they're in costume as well, so uh, maybe an ode to Halloween upcoming, I guess. Well, I know they knew you were coming. They knew I was coming. Yeah, they special, what we, special you know, Paul Santos is usually dressing other things, but for you, it's hat night here, just for you. I even put on, and I'm going to get, you know, chastised in Fall River. I put on a green shirt just to fit in. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how well you do. Doc Noons will, uh, he's, he's taking inventory over there. Well, he gave, me a, you know. he gave me an applause, so I guess I'm doing something right to start out here. Well, he's a politician in town. They always give you the applause, and then they go behind closed doors. <laughs> and that special, special, what do you call that, Doc? Special when you go, but public can't hear you. What do you call that? <laughs> Executive, executive session. session yeah. right. I was never an executive, so they never invited me. <laughs> oh man! So the Indians gonna kick it away. They have the early lead at seven to nothing. And I believe this is Thomas, and he brings it out across the 20 and about out to the 25-yard line, where Jerfy will have it first and 10. Now trailing by a score of seven to nothing. I know how you feel about executive session because I usually have the camera and they kick me out too. So I don't know what goes on behind the, you know? <laughs> It's the same situation. Decent return from Thomas. That was a real deep kickoff uh, for the Indians. So he, he took it back from inside the 10, got a good 15 yards out of it. Evan, the uh, Indian defense has been staunch all season long. They only give up 12 points a game. And a bunch of those uh, points came last week against Brockton. They were just totally out-athleted, if, if there's such a phrase. And Brockton just had too many, too much speed, too much athleticism. Mm. So Durfee has it first and 10. They turn, hand the ball off to their running back. That looked to be Jeff Castro, yeah, was Jeff 24. Castro. Yeah, you know, Durfee's without Javon Holly right now, uh, number one, uh, another senior. Uh, I would say coming into the year, he's probably their number one back. Um, that's just my opinion. Coach Coach said it's kind of running back by committee, but um, Holly, I would say, was your number one. Lewis, number two. Uh, but with Holly out, he's been dealing with an MCL issue, and uh, they're hoping to get him back, I think, for the uh, you know the playoff rounds and Thanksgiving, um, if not even next week. I haven't got an official word yet. Here's Castro in the second down carry, and he's met at the line of scrimmage, Castro and down he goes. Here for the Indians was Danny Martin. Yeah, big hit. Big hit there for Martin. Right here stood him up. Actually, that was a Charrier. JT Charrier, number nine, finishing off the original tackle. You want to get a look at uh, the Durfee fullback. There he is, number 25. He's a small fella. Mm -hmm. Chance Jeffers, 5'9", 240, fullback. Right. They need some blocking here, third and nine. Third and nine for the Hilltoppers. Rolling to the far side. Looking for running room and still running with it. Nudges his way up to the 30 as the quarterback, Thomas. Thomas on the He's going to be a few yards short of the first down he was looking for. Yeah, it's a good cutback to at least not, you know, get caught for negative yardage here. So you basically had Jeffers and Castro blocking for you, but uh, the outside there along the sidelines got kind of buttoned up by the Indians, and now it'll be a punt for Durfee. And that's Lewis who's back for the punt. Or who will be sending the punt off, I should say. Low snap. Mm. One hops it. 
High end over end kick comes down here to the 45 yard line and shoot top tackle made at the 41 yard line. And that was Durfee's Devin Moore on the special teams making the tackle. So the Indians will have their second possession of the first quarter. They're on top in this one by a score of seven to nothing. The band plays on, Evan. The band is tremendous. The pregame show was always always so great. I haven't seen it in a couple years, but uh, haven't lost anything, that's for sure, since the last time I was here. There is Ethan Marks. As I was telling uh, my broadcast partner here, Marks is old school. I've like, uh, broadcast these games for nearly 25 years, and there's been three or four Dartmouth kids as tough as this young fella. He, mm -hmm. he likes to hit. And uh, at this level, a lot of kids, you know, they shy away from contact. He makes sure the defender feels him first. Very rare. Yeah, putting that shoulder down and just keep driving forward. And here's Kelly off the ball fake, and he gets tripped up. This is going to be short of the first down. That was a great fake, because I'm going to tell you, I bought it. I thought that Marks had the ball. And so did our camera crew. <laughs> Everybody did except for you, Jim. I guess your experience paying off here, right? <laughs> yeah. This is the only place that it, that it turned. You know, I've been married for a long time. It doesn't work at home. The experience is out right out the window. Third and short here for Diamond High School, just across midfield. Yeah, less than a yard here. This should be an easy pickup. Here's Marks along the right side. Marks bullies his way down to the 41-yard line and picks up a Diamond High School first down. Down by Devon Moore. Devon Moore made the stop for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, had the blocking, but he would have had it even without the blocking, quite frankly. I mean, you're talking such short yardage there, so easy pickup. You know, Dartmouth Stadium here much makes me think of um, Cressy Field at UMass a little bit. You know, there's no track, so you're right on the action, whereas at most of the high schools with the track, you know, you're a good 25, 30 feet off the play. It makes a difference when you try to see that far side, you know. For well, sure, we broadcast a lot of games out at UMass Dartmouth. Yeah. DC TV for well, about 15 years. We we carried uh, both basketball and football for Sierra Athletics. Mm. So Marks ran it out for two yards, second down and long now here for Kelly and the Indians. I was actually at UMass last weekend for uh, Blue and Gold weekend. Had uh, Mass Maritime in. What a game. Of course, there's one at... Um, Kelly on the carry. Really tremendous. I mean, Mass Maritime top defense in the conference, and uh, the Corsairs outplayed him. It was a it was a tremendous performance. That was Cornell on the stop of the quarterback Plus Kelly to bring up third down and nine. Did you no. graduate from UMass Diamond? I did not actually. I uh, graduated from Fitchburg State. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> My son went to Westfield. You were competitors. Yeah. Third and long here for Kelly. Kelly throws, got a man complete down to the 28-yard line. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. That was well done by Baron Dutra, the senior whiteout. Stopped by Baron Dutra at the 28-yard line. That's enough for a first down. It'll be first and 10 for the Indians. Tough completion there on the far side. To, you know, when you work on the side, you know someone's coming to put a hit on you. The key is just secure that ball. If you get pushed out of bounds, it's going to be in your favor. Key is to hold that ball. Jade Lewis had good good coverage on that as well. Yeah, like I said, I mean he's 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 so fast that he can cover a lot of ground. And I'll tell you, he's had he's had some key picks this year too. Marks was the ball carrier, Cruz the tackler. Gain of four on the play. Gain of four on the play. It will be second. Four and minutes six. to play here in the opening quarter. The Indians on the mark. They have the lead at seven to nothing. On about the 24-yard line of the Hilltoppers. You know when you're uh, in demand and people know to, that they can rely on you. I have people texting me, where's the game tonight? <laughs> Kelly on the carry. How do I watch it? Where do I go? <laughs> Kelly was the ball carrier. Jaden Lewis was the tackler for Durfee. Jeff Castro and Jaden Lewis on, on the tackle for the Hilltoppers. Third down now for the Indians and just about five to go. 
it's a good spot for the Hilltoppers. You know, they have a little bit of wiggle room with, you know, third and four-ish, maybe a little bit more than four, less than five. Uh, this would be a big stop for Durfee after, you know, going out three and out on offense and a flag. Penalty marker on the play. Yeah, that time the uh, Dead ball foul. middle linebacker was showing blitz, and I think uh, one of the offensive linemen, they have a couple of new guys up front in this ball game, and I think one of those young fellas just went in motion a tad before the final snap count. Back the Indians up, where it now becomes third down and basically 10 yards to go. As Kelly comes into the huddle. Clock continues to roll down to the three minute mark here in the opening quarter. That's a big help for Durfee. Now they gotta take advantage of the miscue. Here's Kelly looking for running room. He's got running room. He's got himself a first down and more. He's inside the 10, still on his feet. Wow, that's a great run. He's very athletic, Evan, for sure. We've seen a lot of him. Will Kelly with a nice rollout pass and completion earlier in this drive and now picks up a solid gain on a third down and 10. And got a hilltopper down on the back end of it, but that is a big pickup and that puts Dartmouth you know, in, in, in business here. We'll wait and see who's down for Durfee. He's down on the nine yard line. It will be first and goal for the Indians. Official timeout on the field. So we have it in. So that's uh, Jeffrey Castro for the Hilltoppers, who's down on the far side. Thank you, Mike in the truck. Able to see that. Um, now, Mike in the truck. Now, I've known Mike a long time. He's, he's usually not that, that quick. So maybe you have like a personal oh, relationship with him. Oh. Like he oh. purposely gives me and Santos like the run number to make us look bad, just so you know. Well, I guess that tells you how much he likes me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> You hang around Peter Chase for 25 years, and I don't like get very much. Doc Noons I've known since the early 70s. Oh gosh. So you're, you're an old company up here, I can tell you that right now. But that doesn't mean it's not good company. What do you say, Doc? Ooh, hey, yeah. I'm trying to be nice here, you know? I'm trying. <laughs> well, you're doing your best. <laughs> let's, see what, let's see how I feel in the fourth quarter. <laughs> will be first and goal for the Indians on the Durfee nine yard line. This is Marks. Marks on the carry. Over the right side of the line and get driven back. Solid Hayden tackle. The tackle. There by Hayden. Very solid shot on the Indian uh, runner. Stopped him in his tracks and not many people do that, Evan, that's for sure. Mm. Usually don't get him down in the first, first wrap up. No, they don't. Hayden with a really good tackle there. That that's a good stop there on on first and goal. Unfortunately, you know they're going to have to. This is four down territory, no doubt, especially with the lead. So Hilltopper's going to do. They got to make three more plays here. This is where Kelly is dangerous. He's very athletic. Rolls here to the needs near side. He's going to keep it. He's got running room and he's going to go in untouched from the six yard line. Second touchdown of the game for the Indians. That was all too easy for Kelly. Uh, had had the left side wide open, some good blocking, and you know the one-on-one -on -one matchups there with the blocking opened up some seams as he rolls this way. Look at 34-2, Marks is there to help out. And Kelly didn't like that late hit by Keith point. Strong. No penalty called. Too Pick strong. Is up. And it's good. And the kick is good. So the clock stopped here at Memorial Field. Our score. Dartmouth High School 14. Derby High School nothing. You've seen a lot of the Hilltoppers. How they capable of come back? Do they have the talent to come back? You're one and four on the season on the road, down 14 early in this one. Well, the talent is is there's no question they have the talent to come back. And they did this against Barnstable. They scored two touchdowns in the second quarter two weeks ago to come back and erase a 14-point deficit before the half. Problem is, is again, you know, in the second half of that game, Durfee lost so many players to injury. They're down six starters tonight. I mean, and, and this is a team that is not two platoon. They're playing both sides of the ball. So, I mean, if you're losing six starters, that's half your team. You know, to put it in layman's terms, basically. So it really, 
it's been a tough go of it. And, you know, I, talking to the coaches before the game, the, the kids that have come up to play and fill these positions and, you know, next man up, as they say, um, coaches are happy with the performance during the week. Now it's let's translate it to performing on the field with a live opponent. You know, that that's that's the challenge here. So, um, and the Hilltoppers are going to have an uphill battle as they're down two scores. We're not out of the first yet. So the Indians will kick it away on top by a score of 14 to nothing. High, short kick, right side. Going to let it bounce here. That's Thomas. On the return, flag comes down. Thomas advances it out across the 30-yard line, but I did see a flag. Did I not see a flag? I think it was the marker. The marker? The, yeah, I think it was a marker. Although I've seen there's been so many blocks on the back called against the Hilltoppers, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think there's a flag. It doesn't look like it. Although our head official is talking there in the, uh, you see him on the field, so. And they're marching. On the play. Oh, they, the block in the back what did I say, Jim? Every game. Oh. It, it's, it's really frustrating. I, I've, been, I've been saying it. It's like, don't touch him. Goodness gracious. Brings the ball back to the 10 yard line of the we had, Last year we had a game, Jim, that three returns for touchdowns were taken back because of. I, I've seen enough blocks in the back. Fundamentals. That that's frustrating. And notice too, let's let's take a note on the kickoff. They are avoiding Lewis big time. Thomas switched to the far side of the field this time. They sent it that way. So they are avoiding Jaden Lewis at all costs. They're making Thomas return it. Who could blame him? Yeah, I mean it's not to say Thomas can't <laughs> Thomas is fast, don't get me wrong, but Lewis is your number one and they're avoiding him. So on the kickoff, special teams, the Indians are doing a good job there too. They've done their homework. They know who not to target. That's why it was so lethal having Holly and Lewis back there because they're both tremendous running backs. You know, Thomas first and foremost is the QB. Second down and we'll call it eight yards to go here for Durfee. Backed up deep in their own territory. Kelvin Strong is the runner now in there for Durfee. Thomas in there at the quarterback spot. And that was a high snap and just botched up from the very beginning. Yeah, broken play there. That's going to be a loss. Nowhere to go. To Lewis. Excuse me, Lewis. Parker Souza in on the stop. That's a loss of, loss of two, and play. it'll bring up third down and 11 now for Derby. Half a minute to play in the Balls opening quarter. What do you know about big number 25? I know that um, he's big. I know, yeah, I know <laughs> that Jeffers is a big presence here. Uh, he's a junior this year, so he's going to be back next year, um, as well as uh, Vasquez, Vasquez, excuse me, uh, number 74. So he's going to be back as well. And here's the snap to Thomas. He's still on his feet. He's got himself a first down across the 20 out to the 25 yard line. That was Thomas, QB keep. That's that's a big play. First first down of the evening for the Hilltoppers, and it ends the first quarter, Jim. And uh, you know these are the positive yardage. You got you can't play behind the sticks. You know even three four yards a carry. It doesn't have to be these big bursts of yardage. Get some rhythm going offensively, and that was really what was lacking last week. And again, you know you're dealing with kind of second string personnel right now. I get it, um, but. Uh, last week, they just could not get out of their way offensively. It was a real tough game. I and mean, anytime you get shut out, I mean, it's, it's a long night. Um, and right now, the Hilltoppers have, you add the 14 points here in the last five quarters, Durfee's been outscored 55 to nothing. It's a tough place to be at this point in the season. Yeah, it most certainly is. Um, and Dartmouth, you know, this, this is, you, you can see Dartmouth perhaps uh, a little bit more athletic, a little bit quicker than Durfee. But last week, um, Brockton just made Dartmouth just immobile for the whole game. They couldn't tackle them. The time they went to tackle their backs and receivers, they, they were 
beyond the Indian defense. And Coach Martin, he's been uh, here at Damath High School defensive coordinator for many, many years. I didn't have a chance to talk to him uh, pregame, but I'm sure he would have told me that they were just very quick, too quick for us, I'm sure. So. I always say that Brockton has such an advantage, even BR a bit, because they're more Metro South, if you will, right. Boston versus true South Coast here. And so they're playing upper echelon teams like BC High, like Zavarian, St. John's Prep, even the Newtons, the Plymouths, Needhams, Wellesley. I mean, these are really premier teams and schools up that way. And so then they come down here and no offense to any teams down here, but we're a step behind. You're not seeing that level every week. Well, the, the advantage for the Indians, it, they really should be in Division Three because that's where they're going to play if Absolutely. And they come to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So these games count, yet they don't count. You know, right. If they beat a Division One team, I guess it gets so many points. And if they lose, I guess it uh, really doesn't matter much. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That's exactly right. The, the Division One teams, really, they have nowhere to go but down. So, you know, the opponents, it's always top tier. But you have an Indians team like this, if they can compete with these larger schools, higher division schools, it's only going to help them when the tournament comes along. And I, I truly believe that's a big reason why they, you know, won the Super Bowl a couple years ago as well. I mean, you know, they, based on the schedule, then they get in the division, they're steamrolling over everybody. Well said. That was Cornell on the first down carry of only a couple. Second down and long. I did the um, bracket finals, the first Super Bowl run, the game at Somerset, where everybody said, oh, it's going to be Somerset's night. I did that game with uh, John Cabral. And, um, it, it, I mean, it was all Dartmouth. It was unbelievable that Somerset couldn't do anything in that game. Now, that was an interesting call right there. What's the big fella Jeffers? Mm-hmm. And watch Dylan Gomes go say, you're kidding me. <laughs> Dylan, Gomes Dylan is out there, a third of the size going, coach, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Can't be afraid. <laughs> the Hilltoppers definitely mixing it up um, with, the running, with the running game, sticking to what Coach Taylor Brown said they would do, and that is running back by committee. It's ruining my score sheet, that's for sure. <laughs> Third down in a short four. There's the Durfee Hilltopper fans across the way. Yeah, the sixth man, they call themselves. Started with basketball, really. Timeout, Durfee. And a timeout. I got one of the greatest Durfee stories of all time, and I'm sure Doc Noons, my dear friend, who I share the booth with for a lot of years here at the at the stadium. So, Don Mathai basketball is in the playoffs. And Skippy Karam's a good friend of mine. He was a dear friend of uh, our longtime friend who passed away a few years ago attorney Tom Burke mm -hmm. and we played a lot of golf together and he retires and now he's doing the games on WSA as a color guy we're over doing DC TV and he, he's sitting in front of me for SAR and we're behind him and he's yelling at the referees <laughs> as he's got his headset on right <laughs> and he's screaming his head off and all of a sudden a referee comes up right to the to the table he goes technical foul Durfee you're out of the game. And Skippy goes, me? He goes, yeah, you, get out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So he says, well, what am I supposed to do? So I said, hey, sit with us. <laughs> so he sat with us. He refused to leave. <laughs> oh, dear goodness. Third and short. Oh, that's funny. Here's the roll up by the quarterback, <laughs> Thomas. He's looking for room. He's being chased. And he's going to be hauled down from behind. Esterlin makes the tackle back at the 30-yard line. And that's a loss. And that'll send up fourth down. I feel like Thomas wanted a pass, but there was nobody down the field except for the blocker or the defender right there for the Indians. And that's a big loss as it brings up fourth down, and the Indians' return unit will head back down the field there, Dutra and Marks. Jaden Lewis, the punter for the Hilltoppers. So Drifty had a little spurt there offensively. Now forced to kick it away with just under 10 minutes to go here in the opening half. Indians should get good field position off this punt as Durfee's having personnel issues getting their special teams in order. Another low, low snap. snap. Rides out here to Dutra. 
He's here to the near side. He's got midfield. Moore cuts it inside. He's inside the 45 and down to about the 42-yard line. Where Kelly and company will have it first and 10. Brings the ball all the way back to the 40-yard line. Yeah, low snap there again on the uh, on the punt. Living dangerously there. Um, more often than not, we see the high snap, you know, but not not one that ends up in the dirt. So good recovery there twice by Lewis to to be able to get it off cleanly. First and ten Indians from the 44. Here's Marks. Marks inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. Brought down by Lewis. Where Jaden Lewis made the stop for Durfee across the far, far boundary. Not before Marks picked up a gain of four. Down to the yeah, marking him right at the 40, four, brings up second and six. Second and six for the Indians on the the Hilltoppers five, have five. to limit the damage here. 845 and counting. Uh, if they want to stay in this ball game, they need to stop defensively here. Here's Estelin, cuts it back inside, looking for running room, still on his feet. He's got the 30, he's down inside the 20, he's shoved out of bounds, and then a late hit. And a flag comes in. Jade Lewis, perhaps frustrated, will look on at a big gainer here for Estelin. And that just adds insult to injury. It's, it's you know, bad enough that you know it's a long play, but you just don't need to do that. He's out of bounds. And it's good sportsmanship. Lewis helps him out. He knows he messed up, but you, you know, again, you gotta look. You gotta know where you are. It's, it's on field presence and understanding. Well, I, as a former mm. former coach at UMass Dartmouth, yeah. I would say that was a great sell job by Jaden Lewis. He knew what he did. He sells it by picking the kid up. Sure, you know, absolutely. But he made the initial mistake, as you uh, right, as you stated. Well, first and goal is Kelly, and Kelly Kelly's going to waltz in again. Kelly from four yards out ups the Indian lead to 20 to nothing. And Evan, he's just walking in, no one touching him. No, I know. I mean, they sold it so well, and there was nobody there. I mean, it was you saw him at the end; it just kind of just kind of hopped in almost. It wasn't even a full sprint. Um, if you're an Indians fan, you're loving the bounce back. If you're a Durfee fan, it's been an ugly last game and a half here. 21-0. Yeah, Tarot Ash, he's money. Doesn't miss many. All right, there's the old football coach. I'll take this one, Evan. Slow motion, guys. Stop it right there. Okay. You watch the Durfee defenders and how well they're blocked. Their whole game plan is to stop 34. That, that's what every team wants to do is stop mm -hmm. him. You look at the eyes, look at the helmets of everyone in white. Everyone, watch 25, watch two. Everyone is watching 34. And he just, look at him tackle. They're all tackling. Yeah. Their heads are right on 34, and that's what the defense coordinator says. And look, that's the, that's the touchdown maker. Mm -hmm. But inside the 10, Doc can tell you, that kid right there, number four, oh, yeah. he's great with the play fake. And uh, was that his third touchdown of the evening? Yes, it was. It was a total sell job, and uh, like you said, you know, you come into a game with a game plan, right? And so, if the game plan is go after Marks, well, then they're doing their job. But you got to be careful of the of the fakes and the keepers. And the Hilltoppers have done that a couple times tonight. Dartmouth has snuffed it out. Dartmouth's done it to Durfee and. Hilltoppers have been unable to adjust on the fly, and on such a short field like that, you don't have a lot of room for error. So the Indians kick it away with a 21-point lead. High end over off. end kick. This is Thomas. Thomas on a return. Thomas at his own 25. Looking oh, no, that's Lewis. That's Lewis, excuse me. And Lewis is Lewis out to the about carry. the 34-yard line. Run you can tell these bounds. Fall River announcers, they, they pick right up on my mistakes right away. They... <laughs> See, the guy's getting old. <laughs> Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> Doc says I need glasses. <laughs> my wife says I need more than that. <laughs> so Lewis ended up getting that return this time. Durfee, decent field position. Um, it's about where they would have been on the last drive had they not picked up that block in the back penalty. Um, so, you know, hello there. 
Great to be here. Yeah, they do that because Doc is running for school committee again. He needs space <laughs> time. They, they throw the camera in there in case any opponent wants to run against him. <laughs> it's an old political Dartmouth trick. First and ten Hilltoppers. Don't tell all the secrets on the air, Jim. Then it won't be a trick. And they run it on first down and still on his feet as the ball carries. He gets out to about the 36-yard line. Nice the job there by Pickering. He came in... Uh, the second effort there for the Hilltoppers. You're going to see it here. Watch 57 come in at the tail end of this. Once, on the once the running back gets back up, that's uh, Cornell. Cornell yeah. He stayed up. He was on the defender, and then Pickering comes in and wraps him up. Could have been more. There was some room on this near side for maybe another three or four yards. Instead, it'll be second and about seven. Oh, oh the ball's out. And the Indians claim they have it. Let's see who does. And the Indians have it. And the Dartmouth High School does have it. It was 57, TJ Pickering. There's been a weird thing happening lately where I'll think of something, and I was just going to say the Hilltoppers, you know, the Indians are hitting hard. They've been doing a good job securing the ball, keeping it tucked. I was just going to say it on that last play. And now this next play here, the Hilltoppers fumble it. Do thoughts cause jinx to happen? No. I don't know. Do I need to knock on wood every time I have a thought now? Are you married? No. Well, <laughs> Doc and I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, turnover for the Hilltoppers. Here's Kelly up the ball fake, and Kelly gets it down inside the 35, down to about the 34-yard line. Brought down by Connell. Gain a three. Connell makes the stop for Durfee. Yeah, put a big hit on Kelly right there. On the QB keeper, short gain, paid the price for it, three yards on the pickup. But Hilltoppers have not seen a lot of interceptions. Of course, they run the ball more than they throw it. Uh, it's been more fumbles and, and protecting the ball that way this year in terms of turnovers. And uh, that's a tough spot to, to have one right after you get the kickoff and trying to get a series going. Here's Marks, Marks right the up carry. the middle, and Marks just takes the Durfee front line and bulls his way down, cloaks to the first down. Right Chase Jeffers, Jeffers was there as well for yeah, Durfee. Not before Marks picked Balls up a gain of six. It'll be third three. down and short now for Dartmouth High School. Just they have the lead at 21 to nothing. Just get pumping those legs right there and put, put that shoulder down, hard nose football. Keep pumping those legs till you hear the whistle. And the whistles blow before the handoff. False, false start. And we have a false start against Dartmouth High School. That'll back them up, so they'll go from third and short to now about third and six. Well, that'll help Durfee a little bit. Makes it a little more challenging for the Indians, but they have answered the call on third down tonight. The Indians have not had to punt. Kelly, he'll keep it. He's got room to the outside, and Kelly is down there at the first down marker, and a late flag comes in as well. Picked up the first down he was looking for, but a flag came in late. No hit put on Kelly, so I'm wondering if this may be an offensive call on the tail end of it. I think they're going to get him for holding on the... Or it is the offense basement. holding, yeah. So that's uh, spot foul. Spot foul. Brings the ball back to the 38-yard line. Original line of scrimmage. I think they're getting number one just off camera there. That's where the flag came to. Yeah, I think it's going to be on Gomes. So third and 11, back-to-back -back penalties have uh, stopped the Indians here in their tracks. They were looking at a third and one. Now third and 11. Here's Kelly. Rolls near side. He's got room. Looking. Throws. Downfield. Incomplete. And he's still juggling. He still had a hand on that. I'll tell you, I'm impressed. Ethan Marks was the intended receiver. Double covered back there by the Durfee secondary. 
Lewis chasing down Kelly. He played up this time, not down the field. Isaiah Thomas is back there Isaiah defending for the, the Hilltoppers. It will be fourth and 11. Uh, it looks like if you're the Indians, you go for it here. You're up by three scores with five minutes to play in the half. And Timeout think, called. Yeah, I think Ricky's going to talk Time about it. Indians. The Indian defense gives up uh, just about 12, 12 points per game. And yeah. looking at uh, an injury-riddled Durfee team, it doesn't seem like uh, to me that they're going to come back and score 21 points. So if you gave them the ball with just over five minutes to go, you know, at their own 40-yard line, I don't think uh, Coach Martin would be much concerned no. that uh, Durfee uh, would have a quick score or even a score uh, at that. So, yeah. I mean, the possession was a gift because of the fumble anyway. Um, truthfully, I, I think I think it'd be silly not to go for it, you know, just given the just given, you know, how it goes. <laughs> now, this is this is modern day. That's uh, Doc Nones. It's He's uh, getting his school <laughs> committee. He's making sure how much dough he's, he got in today. Smile, you're on candid yeah. camera. <laughs> Big Brother's always watching. <laughs> I, I, letting the concession know how much time. Oh, have. he's letting oh, the see, concession. See, he's doing his job. Well, and he, here we are a, trying to cause he's problems. A, he's a good politician. <laughs> Wants to see how much money is down in that till down there. <laughs> Jaden Lewis back deep Here's to receive for the Hilltoppers. For the Indians. As you can see, we like to have a lot of fun in the town of Dartmouth. Oh, so, oh, so do I. Please, you got to keep it light. It's high school football. It's all right. Kick on its way. You get serious when it's Jerfy New Bedford, but that's, you know, that's a whole different animal. Here's Lewis. <laughs> oh, what a tackle. Lewis is hit immediately and taken down. Therefore, the Indian was Chase Fenno. Indians expect a lot of Fenno in the upcoming years. They, they have uh, he and uh, Adams. Another young player, Jalen Adams, wide out. They have high hopes for those two kids in the next couple of years. It will be first and ten mm. for the Hilltoppers. The Great job Hilltop. there by Fino. Fino comes from a Fino, uh, excuse me. athletic family. You know his dad and his grand grandfather very well. Two of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. And uh, Mrs. Fino is one of the nicest Love ladies you'll ever want to meet. So the Hilltop is trailed by three touchdowns. They have the ball deep in their own territory. Thomas rolls to the near side. Thomas on the carry. It's a good run there. Got a good block from uh, Jeffers. Kind of open up that little bit of a lane as he cut back inside. The trouble with a big fullback like that is Thomas on the carry. He's, he's immobile. So you follow the football, and you know he might make one block, but he's never going to get to the hole because he's too slow. Right, yeah, so no, the speed's not there. You know, it, it looks intimidating, but anything other than running between the center and the guards, anything to the outside, he's, he's not of much use, I wouldn't think. No, you're right. So it, it's about that initial block, trying to, hoping that you can open up a lane, then let the running back or the quarterback do his thing. Right, and here is the big fella, nudges his way across the 20. Be close to a first hit. Yeah, they're going to give it to him. Moving the chains. So the Hilltoppers will progress here. Another set of downs. Okay, We're going to roll up on four minutes in this first half. That's enough for a Hilltopper first down. First and ten for Durfee. Now, can you imagine if you're a, the parents of line. young Jeffers and he says, what would you like to eat this morning? And if, you probably got like a $400. I know my kids growing up. And he's a big fella like that. He likes to eat a lot like I did when I was a kid. He's a big fella. So timeout on the field. Coach Martin will rally the defense. And across the way, the head coach of the Hilltop is Taylor Brown. What do you know about him? Is he a former Hilltopper? Sure is. Yep, played under Coach Steve Wynarski, who I saw here on the field pregame. I didn't get to talk to him, but he's here tonight. Uh, good to see Coach Wynarski. Um, yeah, Taylor played and uh, is currently one of our vice principals at Durfee as well. So, um, you know, they work these kids hard, that's for sure. And, you know, knowing the, you know, the injuries and whatnot last week coming into the game and, you know, the result and whatnot, you know, it's, it's, it's defeating, certainly. You know, it's, it's you put the time in, you know, during the week at practice and, 
so many hours and you know it's it's hard to, sometimes to stay positive i'm not saying he said this i'm just saying in general you know these guys they're working hard and you know these last two weeks have been really trying i'm sure It's the quarterback keeper. He's got room and spins his way out across the 30. Nice run by Thomas, the quarterback. Thomas on the carry. And that's going to be enough for Hilltopper first down. Gain of 10. Danny Martin on the tackle. Martin was the tackler, the linebacker for the Indians. Maybe the Hilltopper is getting a little bit of a rhythm here. Still got a long field. They will get the ball to start the third quarter as they uh, had to kick off to Dartmouth to start the game. You mentioned Jeffers, you know, such a big presence as well as some of the other um, linesmen as well for the Hilltoppers, Vasquez and Halliday. Um, but, you know, last year they had Eli Robitaille and Sage Paradise who were even bigger, like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, big kids. The blocking was outstanding. So the line is missing that too. You've had, again, next man up. And that pass is thrown along the far oh, sideline. Nice. Let's see. They're going to call it a catch. Out there close to midfield. I, uh, let, you can see, see that. this again. Jim. Well, you you can Lewis. see that play coming. Top of your screen is Lewis. Sure, but for Thomas, first of all, pressure was coming. He's going back and forth, barely in bounds to make that pass, and Lewis somehow coming down with it. That's impressive. That was not an easy pass. My old coaching, I said, as soon as I saw Thomas at the whiteout spot, I said, top of the screen, they, they're going to him. Mm -hmm. Hilltoppers have not been on Dartmouth's side of the field yet. They're one yard from crossing midfield. Thomas rolls out. Here's Thomas. Thomas on the carry. Thomas has running room along his bench side of the field. Run across the boundary by the Indians, Dylan Gomes. Dylan Gomes. Not before he picked up a good chunk of yards. Well, Durfee seems to have noticed something that they can exploit on that far side of the line because they've gone that way now three times. They've had no luck on this side but they're working the far side along their sideline. So the coaches must have seen something. Durfee will be looking at a second and two after the timeout on the field, Dartmouth. So do you teach over at, uh, actually you work for the uh, cable company over there, right? Right, so well, Fred TV and FRG TV, the educational government channels are actually inside Durfee High School. Um, and now we have the brand new high school as we're, all, we're still kind of getting settled um, across the building and there's still some finishing work and whatnot being done as well. So um, it, it's a fluid process. Um, but uh, so I am not one of the teachers. We're a staff of seven. Uh, we have two instructors that teach curriculum electives and whatnot. My instruction comes in the field, particularly with doing sports. So our students get hired uh, by us part-time, those who, are, who show real drive and want to do this stuff, keep up their grades and assignments and whatnot. Uh, we can hire them as part-time workers after hours, and they will work, you know, some of the municipal meetings, they'll work, they work a lot of sports with me, so that's where my instruction comes. It's actually in the field. That sounds like a fun job. It's awesome. It really is. Second is short here. They that's a live ball. The near side, it may be live. That was a backwards pass. And Picking it up is Lewis. Lewis no back. whistles yet. Lewis still has it. Lewis has a little bit of running room. He's got himself a first down after all that. Finally shoved out of bounds by Estelin along the far sideline. I'm not sure whether the Dartmouth defense was quite aware of what was happening there. I don't even know what I just saw other than to say that that was most definitely a backwards pass and a live ball that Lewis had to scoop up and make lemonade out of lemons. That's incredible what Lewis just was able to do. This is why they didn't want to, they didn't want to kick off to him. Look at what he can do through a pile. That's, that's huge for the Hilltoppers as they get down inside the 30. You notice a little Peter Chase high step there along the sideline. The Indians, it'll be first and 10 for the Hilltoppers. First and 10 now, Durfee, just under two and a half to go in the second quarter. They basically faked the same play, and the quarterback, Thomas, near side, has got running room, shoved out of bounds. Thomas gets shoved out of bounds. The late hit there. Will Kelly. Will Kelly. Defensive back. Pushed him out of bounds. Thomas didn't go tumbling down like we saw, you know, the hit that Lewis put on on the other side here, but a bit of a late hit. 
That'll stop the clock, though, as well. And it's a first down for the Hilltoppers. So a few people in Dynamith are wondering why Evan is rooting so hard for Durfee. Well, he works over there. He knows all I the wouldn't coaches. say I'm rooting. I try to be fair. But, he, you know, if he does soccer and a couple other sports, you know, he, he he's bleeds green. But when he does football, he's, you know, doesn't care about you, Doc. That's for sure. Oh, goodness gracious. This is the best the offense has looked in six quarters. Seriously. Well, as soon as you say that, the ball carrier. Because yeah, that's how it Jane goes. Lewis gets wrapped up in the backfield. <laughs> the beauty of live sports. I am never right. <laughs> TJ Pickering <laughs> made the stop for the Indians. Loss of four on the play. It will be second and 14. Second down and about 14 to go here for Durfee. Clock rolls. That can shift momentum back to Dartmouth's defense very quickly here. The Hilltoppers, if they want to score as the clock keeps rolling here, got to come up with something. Thomas has Cornell standing to his right. Rolls right. They're reeling him in, though, from behind. And he throws, and that's going to be across the boundary, incomplete. Incomplete, out of bounds. See what I mean, though? I, we mentioned this earlier, and you'll see it again on the replay. So when Thomas rolls out, of course, he's a righty, so easier to roll out to his right. When he does this, and he's not in a full sprint, you know he's going to pass. This, that, that's, that's the passing lane for Thomas. It's not drop back and pass down the field. That is not as... Um, frequently done. There's a holding call, holding call against Durfee as well. Holding a call against Durfee. So they'll spot the football just inside the 30-yard line. Well, there goes your offensive momentum the if you're the Hilltoppers. Just made Dartmouth's job a whole heck of a lot easier with less than 90 seconds to play. Second down and a long Uber ride to Far River for the Hilltop. Seriously. That's what I mean, though, not, you know, playing behind the sticks. You know, you have had a good drive, some real good bursts of speed, and a sack and a penalty, and now it's, you know, second and 21. And the, the quarterback keyboard. keeps the football. Danny Martin right read it well for the Danny Indians. Martin. Sure did. Wrapped up Thomas right at the ankles and couldn't break free. And that's hard to tackle down there when, you know, the legs are bumping and whatnot. Good job wrapping them up. Three on the play, it will be third and 17. Third down, Dot News has it at 17 yards to go. Clock rolls within a minute to play here at the stadium. Jim Thompson, Evan Massoud, welcome you to this telecast. Hello to everyone on YouTube, all three of you. <laughs> Thomas. Thomas As time now rolls. A lot of room. You're going to chase him, force him to the sideline. Nice defensive play. Beautifully done by Baron Thomas Dutra. And Dutra Baron said, Dutra. fine, go out of bounds. That's fine. Knew he was going to cut back. He needed big yardage there. And very nice defensive play. I wonder if Jeffrey's out of timeouts the here. Because the, ball's, uh, the clock is still rolling. And they're not rushing back to the line. Has one timeout left. I'm surprised it, it hasn't been used yet. Well, there you go, right on cue. So with mm. two seconds to go. Maybe they're just going to take one shot down the field. I'm, I'm a little sure. surprised. You know, that last play, we saw the replay. You know, Thomas, there was a lot of room along the hash marks or the pocket, and he didn't cut back in, and I'm wondering if the clock was on his mind and he just wanted to get out of bounds and stop the clock. But the ball is on the I don't know. I guess it's a catch-22. I saw a lot of room, and then he cut back out where the defender was. Almost went right to Dutra. So that's not going to get you down the field either. So I know there's, there's a fine line between clock management and you know, obviously trying to score. But when I see 20 yards of open space, go. Let the coach use the time, especially if you have one. Get the first down, and then worry about the, the clock later. Never give up yards. Well said. Now, last week, the Indians had... Uh, I think it was 14-14 with about this amount of time left on the clock. Uh -huh. And Brockton threw a touchdown pass as time expired in the second quarter. 
and they took the lead into the half and never looked back. Now those big bad boxers. Yep, so that, uh, <laughs> the Indians are in the same position. They have six guys back deep, but they did that last week as well, and Brockton found a way to uh, get the touchdown pass. Well, Durfee's going to send trips to the right side. Thomas, I would expect to roll out that way. Um, here he is, Thomas. Here comes the rush, and Thomas isn't going to be able to get it away. And a late flag comes in as well. Mm. Is it going to be roughing the passer here? I don't think so. That they kind of fell on him. Second guy came in. There were two defenders. I didn't see anything really egregious there. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, they're calling it unsportsmanlike conduct, and wow, that'll keep. Coach White, I don't think likes that call. He's out on the field questioning it. I don't blame. I, I mean, let's you know. I didn't see much there unless we missed it with the naked eye here. Isoed here from behind. There's one wrap up. I'm not seeing much there. No, no I mean. <laughs> Either did the referee. <laughs> yeah. It was Chris Andrade, I believe, for the Indians. Yeah, and look at look at coach look at Coach White. Yeah, had, I guess that's did the they, end of the did half. Did they pick up the flag? They might then? have picked it up. I know Whitey's running for the hills. That's always a good sign. And the Indians are right pick behind him. The, the Indian the marching band will be marching into your living room. Our score at the half is Dabbath High School 21, Derby High School nothing. Stay tuned, everybody. Now here's what I want you to do at home. I want you to go to your refrigerator or pour a hot cup of tea. And I want you to sit back on your couch. And I want you to watch a high school band that has a live violinist. This is one of the most spectacular high school bands you'll ever see in this area for sure. But if, you, if you're not really a football fan, you really enjoy this. And if you are a football fan, you'll see that there's more going on at the high school of ours. That it's not only the football team and the other athletics, this is a national award-winning band. They have more xylophones than Doc Noons has automobiles in his, in his driveway. No, it's amazing. It, it's, it really is, Jim. So sit back. We want you to enjoy it. We hope Evan enjoys it because uh, the Durfee band can't compete with our band, but that'll be an off-air conversation he and I can have. Throwing daggers. Sit tight, everybody. Enjoy the halftime show. We'll be back with more action right after the halftime show. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen of Dartmouth High School Marching Band and Color Guard. I'm John Noons, your announcer, and on behalf of our Dartmouth High School football team and band members, we thank you for your attendance here this evening, and we hope to see you here next Friday night. Again, also, too, would just like to remind you that if you have someone at home that's unable to be here tonight, they can watch this game live on Dartmouth Football YouTube and then also during the week on Channel 9 DC TV. said every pursuit we hope you're enjoying this broadcast of Dartmouth High School football and I'm telling you if that didn't that might send you <laughs> chills up and down your spine that Dartmouth High School marching band it, they are just fantastic and what a what a show and if mm -hmm. you get an opportunity to come out there's band competitions uh, here at the high school and other places if you just check with uh, the administration the superintendent's office or the high school um, they'll tell you where some of the band competitions are and um, you can always catch them on Channel 9 as well. First half, uh, mostly all Dartmouth. Uh, the defense once again pitching a shutout. And uh, young Will Kelly is running for three touchdowns. Evan, uh, you're Jeffy Hilltoppers. And, you know, it's been hard to sit next to you. I hate to say it for the first uh, 24 minutes because you're rooting hard for those Hilltoppers. I can hear it through your voice. You get a little angry, a little miffed, a little anxious. 21 to nothing. Your team's down. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it was a tough first half. The Hilltoppers got got it going a little bit um, late in the half there, and then a couple penalties, sack, brought them back, kind of took the wind out of their sail. Um, there was a flag, uh, we should mention, that was assessed on that last play as time expired, and I th think it's going to be... Yeah, they're going to kick the football from yeah. their own 25-yard line. So it's going to be assessed on the kickoff. That's why everybody left the field. So Dortmund's going to kick from much further back than usual. Um, but, you know, it's really it, it's to everything we talked about over the first, uh, you know, 24 minutes of game time and even pregame in the open is that the Hilltoppers are short on personnel right now. And, you know, they're really on a skeleton crew. And unfortunately, they can't seem to get much going offensively um, that one little burst that they had late in the half again got halted so 21-7 would look a lot different than 21 nothing right now um, you know it, it's a, it's unfortunate for the Hilltoppers because they had been playing pretty solid through the first four weeks and again the way they played against Barnstable Jim you know a ranked team um, I was very impressed you know they were down 14 nothing they came back tied it before the half and then the injury started happening late in that second half and it's the result of that has carried over last week and now this week. Hilltoppers have been held scoreless in the last six quarters, outscored 62 to nothing. So it's it's not pretty numbers. Um, I give Dartmouth all the credit in the world because defensively they have been nose to nose. Um, I, I'd be interested to see if Dartmouth can tighten up um, Thomas's right side because on that last drive to end the half, Thomas was rolling out a lot to his right and working that sideline, and it seemed like Durfee was able to exploit something in the defense. So I'd be interested to see what Coach White picked up there on Durfee's last series and if that'll get buttoned up here to start the third. So Lewis was the kickoff returner. He advanced the football out to his 44-yard line. Well, they'll have it to start the first series of the third quarter. Indians on top, 21 to nothing. It's been basically a breeze thus far for Coach White and his staff. Durfee with only one win on the season against four losses. The Indians four and one on the season. Both teams coming off losses last weekend. See if Durfee can get it together here as they start the second half. As Heaven said, get good field position. Dartmouth committed a penalty last play of the first half. There they have it first and ten. They'll start with a quarterback draw. Oh, Thomas. Wildcat. That was actually, I think that was, was that, Lu oh no, Lewis is here. It was Thomas, excuse me. I, I thought it was Thomas for a minute there. Folks at home, there's nothing worse than the color guy and the public address announcer trying to broadcast a game at the same time. <laughs> Confusing an old 65-year-old man like myself. Or 68 in my case. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> gain of five on well, the play. Ball is right, knows that a football is right at midfield. I have to say, I have, don't do a lot of night games here in Dartmouth uh, particularly. I don't, I'm not sure if I've actually done one since they redid the field in the stadium. These lights are fantastic. This is probably one of the most well-lit fields that I've been to down on the South Coast here for, for a Friday night game. I mean, they Thomas run the same play. Up. Thomas, he's got himself a first down and more as he gets inside the 40-yard line. Got to probably mark him down around the 37-yard line. Two plays, two big gainers for the Hilltopper quarterback. Hole open up there. Big tackle on the backside there. That was uh, number 67 there. Uh, Christopher Yornet, another big linesman for the Hilltoppers. Big Derpy's figured out. If they watched the tape of Brockton last week, the Indians had a lot of, a lot of uh, issues with the talent of Brockton. And this uh, Thomas is quite an athlete. And, uh, I'm sure they're going to try to keep the ball in his hands as they do here, but this time he's going to be corralled for a loss. Getting in there for the Indians was Parker Souser and Pickering as well. It's a big loss. They were on Thomas right from the start of that. There was no opportunity for Thomas to even try to throw down, dump that one off, you know, for an incomplete. That's a big sack there. Good job by the... Indians defense, they jumped the line, not fooled. Uh, for a minute, I thought Cornell had it for the Hilltoppers, and then I saw Thomas tuck it, and in came the Calvary. <laughs> so it'll bring up second down and 
19 to go for Durfee. They trailed by three touchdowns in this one. And Thomas looking for running room. This play's been effective. This time he's out for a solid gain of eight, almost nine yards. It'll bring up third down and 12 yards to go. Right before he cut in, it almost looked like he was going to tackle. Watch him put his head down right there. I thought he was going to get hit right there and um, got a few extra yards out of it. Still a third and long situation. Another, another example of playing behind the sticks. It wasn't a penalty this time. It was the sack, which you know equally is effective in terms of backing up a uh, progressing offense. Well, I think that man might have been in motion. Here comes the flag. Thomas wheels, throws, completes it. Down here to the near sideline. Jaden Lewis on the reception. But uh, that wide out, which was running to the dot side of the field. Yeah, I think that's going to be an illegal motion, oh, illegal sure. shift. Yeah. Um, not to mention that, regardless, the pass also was not going to be enough for a first down anyway. But that was that was really an odd, odd setup there. That was um, Keith Strong that they sent in motion, number 18. Referee talking it over with Ricky White and. I guess the question would be, right, is you make it fourth down and short for Durfee, would they're gonna they basically have to go for it at this point? Or do you back them up further and redo the down? If I'm Ricky, I'm backing them up. I don't want to give them I would too. short. I'd back them up and the offense of Durfee has had a tough sledding here tonight. Mm. And Thomas has been about uh, the only uh, person here, especially in the second half. Lewis a little bit in the first half, but and here we go again, Doc Nunes. A simple penalty call is taking <laughs> way too long. Legal shift. So there's two penalties. The shift oh was, boy. was declined in a holding call. Holding is accepted. So you see the man in motion turn his shoulders there. That's first foul. And the second one is right there, the Dartmouth defender, the defensive end, was just pulled to the ground. I didn't see a second flag come in, though, which is kind of odd. So I guess that was why the delay, because we were just expecting that it would be the illegal shift. That was the most apparent. So spot foul, the hold. Third and long. Here's Thomas. He's got room. Into the near side, he's got the 40, he's got the 30, steps out of bounds. And he's going to be very close to the first down. He's going to be a yard or two short. Tell you, I thought Dartmouth had him wrapped up right back here at about the 40-yard line, and Thomas made a real quick cut and rode the sidelines. I mean, good credit to him. Right here, I thought they were going to get him. That was uh, Graham White, and Thomas got by him, and now you're looking at that fourth and short. Fourth and maybe a yard and a half. That was a gain of 22 from, from Thomas. And now they're facing fourth down as he gets the call from Taylor Brown. Mm -hmm. Coach Brown came out. Called him over. Honestly, I would go with Thomas here. Draw it right up the middle. Because that's what's been working. You got less less than two yards. And that's worked on this drive here. Yeah, here he goes. He's going to go right up the middle. Oh, and he's going to he be stopped. stopped. Him. He's going to be stopped. He ran right into the interior defense. And that was Danny Martin was there for the Indians. Danny Martin, Parker Souza. At, uh, I don't think he got there at all. Yeah, he, he leaped and it was brought back. And Chase Lackey as well there for the and Indians. It is first and 10 for the Indians. They will take over on downs at their own See, sometimes I line. haven't been around the game a long time. I take the smallest kid on the field, which is the quarterback. He's been anything but that. You yeah. would they, they put a man in motion who's a very small player, Jaden Lewis, and he ran behind Lewis, who's like five foot three, and he runs in the middle of the line, but he's been effective on the perimeter. I didn't quite get the, the play call. Here's Kelly. Well, Kelly's Kelly got running room to the outside. Kelly is over there in the derpy well, bench, and here comes a late flag thrown in by the referee. Coach Brown on the far side, and uh, one of his assistant coaches, I think it was Chris, I think it was uh, Chris Thomas. They talked with the official for a bit, and it's still not happy. Mm. 
I mean, we're off angle here, but I, I still don't think – I think that was a good call there on fourth and two. Uh, the Indians definitely made the stop because Thomas went leaping and they didn't get him. But now a hold here. I, I, I disagree. I think he's an athlete, and I don't think you plunge the athlete up the middle. I think you – this look, look what he's done in the second half. He gets back out of the shotgun, sees the field. Sure. And once he sees the field, he's so fast. Yeah. It was like the Brockton kids last week. Thomas hasn't tackled the kid the second half. No, absolutely. Is Kelly up across the 35 and gets to the 36 yard line? Lewis on. Will Kelly on the carry. Mool on the tackle for Jerfy and Indians picked up good yardage on first down. Just under eight minutes to play here in the third quarter. Yeah, six yard carry there on the replay of first down after the holding penalty. So. Good chunk of yards, more than half the way there. Pitch it out. Here's Marx. Marx got ahead of steam going. Got himself a first down. He's out the, the 45 yard line. Nice block right there to allow him to cut back in. Indians doing their job on the corner there. That's enough for an Indian first well, it was Chase Jeffers, It'll the big fella, in pursuit. Playing hard right to the whistle. Made the defensive stop for the Hilltoppers and not before. Ethan Marks picked up a first down. And Marks has been quiet in this one. But he's he's the key to make the Indian offense roll. Kelly on the keeper. Time to quarterback Kelly. Get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down, down and 10 now for the Halliday. Indians. That was Halliday who made the tackle for the Hilltoppers. They, they rushed. They brought a lot of pressure that time off the edge and then right up the middle. Ended up kind of a bit of a broken play for Dartmouth. They couldn't really, not, not that clean there, barely getting back to the line of scrimmage. They just, they just did get back to the line of scrimmage. Here's Marx. Marx has got himself a gain of about six yards. A, Gang tackle him here at midfield. Kevin Strong, one of the fellas to get him, along with Devin Mool. Indians will have third down and five. And got stood up there and then just, again, you know, leaning forward, pumping the legs, forward progress, and then finally dragged back down as uh, Devon Mool played a key role. Marks has a great first step. He has a head of steam once he gets going. And here's Kelly off the ball, fake, throws it here on the mid side. That's Dutra. And Dutra has got himself a first down. Finally taken down by Kevin Strong in the secondary, but not before a gain of eight in the first down for the Indians. How about that? A rare pass for the Indians. They have not gone to the air much at all. Faked it. And just enough. Again, a good cut back. Sold it enough. You get by your defenders, that first string of defenders, and... You pick up the extra yardage that you need. Marks on the carry. There's Marks. Marks twists his way down to the 35-yard right line. Chase Jeffers. Jeffers got him around the shoe top. And the big fella Jeffers is slow to get up. Seems to be okay. Approach the, the five-minute mark. Indians on top in this line. one by a score of 21 to nothing. Second and five. Jeffers leaving the field now. Second and a short five. Almost four. We hit the Indians. And this is the Indians. Will Chow, who very seldom carries the ball. He's one of the fellows in the backfield that is a great blocker for Marks, and that time he got a chance to carry the ball himself. Just play follow the leader right there. Marks with some Ball great blocking. The 15 yard line of the Hilltop is it'll be first and 10 for the Indians. First and 10 down. Perfect 15 yard line. Kelly off the ball fake. Kelly on the carry. Yeah. The Didn't fool anyone that time. No, looking like a loss of about four yards. Right Jeff Castro came Devil. across for Hilltop the Hilltoppers. Led by Gene Lewis. Yeah, that didn't pan out very well, that fake. Looks like they're spotting him for a loss of three. 
Loss of three on the play, it will be second and 13. Second along here for the Indians. Ball is on the hilltopper, 18 yards. Clock continues to roll. In favor of the Indians, here's Kelly up the ball fake, gonna throw it out in the flat, far side of the field, completes it, but not for very much of a gain. No, that ball was, <laughs> that that ball was, was in the air for a long time spot. to only come down with uh, maybe two yards out of it. Yeah, two yard pickup, still not back to the original line of scrimmage. That's, that was good coverage down the field at Hilltoppers one-on-one -on -one there. Maddox Dupree, perhaps his first reception of the year. That was a pass that uh, they'll sit him down on Monday and say, you know, that mm. defender had an open field. Sure. You might want to not try that again. But they got away with it. And here they are now off the ball fake. Kelly throws. Kelly complete. Pass. Down complete. inside the 10 yard line. Catching the football Baron there was Dutra. Baron Dutra. And that's going to be very close to the first down they were looking for. It's going to come up about a yard or two short. It'll be fourth down. If anyone is parked on the street, in back of the scoreboard by Town Hall, that laneway there, you need to move your car immediately. Thank you. Yeah, looking at uh, fourth down and one here, and it's interesting to note that two yard, that pass that was only for two yards made it third and 11. That was a third and 11 play right there. If they were back at the original line of scrimmage, they would have had the first down. Now fourth and one, they set the man in motion. Here's Kelly, looking for running room, cuts it back inside, nudges his way for a three yard gain and a first down. Down to the four yard line, that's enough for so not only. Uh, Evan of the, uh, the Indians the controlling Indians. the football. On this the quarter is flying by. Yeah, sure is. Everything's been on the field of play. Lots of running plays, just a bunch of draws or sweeps or pitches. You name it. You know, basically throwing the book at Durfee. And uh, they're staying in play, so it's moving the clock. Here's Marks along the right side. Marks on the carry and, and he's, he's in, in for, a for a touchdown from three yards out. Ethan Marks. Touchdown run by Ethan Marks. The Indians now lead by a score of 27 to nothing. Marks is just one solid runner. Now look at the blocking though. I mean, goodness, we say follow the leader. In that case, it was follow the crowd. <laughs> I mean, really. Tremendous blocking. They'll, of course, go for the point after here. Taradash to attempt the point after. Here's the rush and four this, four. this young fella doesn't miss many. No, and again, you know, for Durfee, you know, their kicker is, is out with a concussion, should be back next week. Anasio has been just as solid as Taradash. And, you know, it, in high school football, how often do you say, oh, it's just the automatic go for two because you don't have that solid kicking team. So I have a real appreciation for, you know, seeing Taradash kick like this. I've seen Hilltoppers have success kicking the ball going back to last spring and now this fall. Um, it changes things tremendously. Here's the Indian crowd enjoying uh, this victory. And now, you know, Ethan, uh, Evan, excuse me, I've seen a lot of games here. And yeah. this is the first. Uh, if you're a fan of this game and you park your car over there, those police officers aren't happy with you right now. No. They're not happy. They, If there was an ambulance or something they needed to get by, but um, I know parking stuff here. It gets to be rather chaotic. But I mean, that's just yeah. You know, we deal with the same thing in Fall River. I mean, it. it had people, well, you, you had Fall River. You had the world's greatest mayor. You know what? What's going on with that mayor? You a friend of his? I mean, you fun, funnel many cash, anything like that? Oh come on! No, nothing. No. no. We're not talking politics. <laughs> not. Yeah, not in that town. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, our, what, our current mayor, actually, Mr. Coogan, he was well, he you, was actually my vice principal. Well, I, I could tell when you uh, called him Mr. It's like I call him Mr. Chase, <laughs> Peter Chase. Now that he's like the interim director, it used to be Peter, now it's Mr. <laughs> and I, I tell everyone, and I tell him often, yeah. he knows where every That's skeleton and dead body is <laughs> this time. And someone asked me, should he get the job? And my first answer was, I don't know if he can get it, but you wouldn't want him to tell stories about every town administrator and <laughs> person in town. He knows everybody, and everyone loves him. 
I'm trying to get a raise. He's noticed that. If build him up a little bit. He's, he's got a little power now. Maybe throw a few shackles my way. Oh. Well, while you're at it, advocate for myself as well. Okay, we'll do <laughs> Do my best, even though you're from Far River. Yeah, but I'm Dartmouth right now. Well. <laughs> High end over end kick the near side. Oh, ball I think he touched it. Muffed. He did touch it. Ball rolls in the end zone. He's going to try to run it out. And it's being pinned in back there. And that is just a special team's blunder. Well, that kind of... Jaden Lewis. That says it all for what how tonight has gone and how last week went, unfortunately. Brings the ball. Hasn't been pretty. Now, having coached kickoff and punt return, you never do that. <laughs> You've got to can't let the ball go over your head and then fall backwards and try to catch it. it just you know, if it does, just touch. don't don't touch it. Let right. it go, just let it be a touchback. Let yeah. Call him a touch but back. these are what kids do, and now the referees are. So are they? Oh, so maybe are they saying Lewis didn't touch it after all, and then when it rolled into the end zone, it's a touchback. But he tried to bring it out, though. Right? So if he brings it out, it's a lie. But it's well, not the, a touchback. The whistle should have blown if it was a touchback. And that's right. That's probably what, this, what they're discussing. Well, Maybe we can run that back again, fellas. Slow motion. Conference call on the field while the officials figure it out. We'll take a look at it again. There we go. So did Lewis touch it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Balls, yeah, lost a ton of momentum there. So they're going to call it a touchback. The referee up here in the booth says it doesn't matter. As long as it crosses the goal line, it's a touchback. Okay. A lot of new rules. I think there were 35 or 40 new rules in high school football this year. That's more than I, I can seen. count. Well, I don't went know. went to Fitchburg after all. <laughs> you did. You couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't get into UMass <laughs> Diamond. They went to Fitchburg of all places. Well, dare I say, because we like to have a little fun up here, we'll, uh, we all know the Sox are in the ALCS, and they're down one nothing to Houston right now. Down in Houston in game one. Oh, that is That's incomplete. An incomplete pass. The intended receiver was Jaden well, Lewis. Pass is incomplete, intended for Lewis. Well, and the Dartmouth police are back over there. They're, maybe Again, we get a shot over there. Back. Someone like me is a chicken to go over there, Evan, and... Good. And tow them. To oh, there they are. <laughs> Get the flatbed and hook it up. <laughs> you know, Doc Noons just told me they're looking for Peter Chase. He might have stolen Doc's microphone oh, that's from the not, last game. That's not Pete's car. He's got a white car, but that's not Pete's car. Oh, no. It might be stolen. That's not <laughs> <laughs> We won't say what the boys in the truck just said, but we'll just let that pass. <laughs> There's a solid run here for oh, the Hilltoppers. Boy. They get out, out across the 25 out to the 27 <laughs> yard line. And they've had a host of running backs in this game, as Evan has said throughout the telecast. They're just banged up. Yeah, I mean it's that's what happens, and and you just have to have to just go with who's out there, try to see what you got, and you know something starts to work for you, and you don't change it till it doesn't work, basically. But I mean there is a lot of players on this team for Durfee to run the ball. It's, it's now a matter of getting some consistency. Third and three. Romero in there at the running back spot, takes the handoff, looks for running room, and he stood up at the line of scrimmage and Lost. he's gonna be Lost of two. short, yep. Romero on a carry, met by a host of Indians, led by Chase Lackey. Lackey, once again, Lackey's had a good game. He hasn't seen much time for the Indians this, this season. Yeah, he's no Lackey. <laughs> Actually a loss on the play of Oh, that Fall River humor. Oh, this I know, right? Five. The Riv in the house. We love it. <laughs> love to have you alongside. <laughs> one nothing, Houston. Altuve uh, getting asked here about the Sox score. Fourth down and four. Yeah, you got to go for it. This is just at this point in the game, it, it is what it is. No rush by the Indians. Now they close it on the quarterback, and he runs right in. Two, the Indians, Run, Parker Souza, and that'll turn the possession over to Dartmouth High School. I'm not sure what happened there. Thomas is very fast. Now Thomas is down. 
I mean, they were closing in on him. I know he's looking for a room to pass, but there was actually, in this case, there was a lane, and he was just kind of jogging forward. I think if he turned it on and went full steam ahead, he probably could have gotten the first down. Just a weird play, but now Thomas, the last thing Durfee needs is to lose the quarterback at this point. Well, why we have this stoppage in play? Mm -hmm. Now, Peter Chase, uh, he's our leader now here at uh, Dartmouth uh, Community sure Media, is. whatever we call ourselves nowadays. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do for all you fans that have been with us for the last 24, 25 years. We're going to go to the fan of the game. So, okay, fellas, get, get your camera. Oh, there we go. Peter's right on top of it. Now we're going to tune in now. That's a student section, Doc Noons is saying. I guess he doesn't want a student to get a pizza, but you get a free pizza at FaZe. Soon as Peter stops that camera, you'll win a free pizza. Oh, that could it be a, a cowboy. What are we going to do that, that uh, person with the, what are we going to do? The guy with the horse. The guy, is that a, okay, the horse. The horse gets it. Now, if if you know who owns that horse, all I have to do oh, is go and walk in the face and say you're the fan of the game. Indians right there. Take over on downs. It will be first and ten. Those guys the in the Indians. truck, you know, you can't rely on them. You want on some adult to win it. Bring me a wife for their date. You know, here Get a I free am. pizza and a wine and they, they pick a horse. Forget an adult. I mean, I was waiting for them to go over to the Durfee side of the field. <laughs> Give a visitor a free pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that was the work on Ethan Marks on the carry, and he got himself a first down. And that's enough for an Indian the time is down. running out here in the quarter. Yeah, the Indians obviously not going to run another play. Nope, so that'll do it. Reset it. The the so quarter, at the end of three complete here from the stadium, our score is Dartmouth High School 28. Turfey High School nothing. What's up for Durfee the last several games? They must have a lot of conference games ahead, I would think, before the playoffs begin. Hilltoppers have Brockton next week, so it's not going to get much better, um, or easier, I should say. Um, and then they have a bye. So I, well, I don't want to misspeak here, so let's just pull, this, pull up the schedule. Um, I believe it's Brockton next week. No, excuse me, that's why I wanted to double check. So Hilltoppers are off next week. So they'll have a bye, which is gonna be good. They'll have two weeks to try to get healthy and prepare for Brockton, which as we know, will be a tough matchup as well. Um, and then from there, they're gonna go into the three weeks of non-playoff bracket, uh, non-playoff rounds. Um, Cause realistically with tonight, they're not gonna make the tournament. Um, so, They'll go into the non-playoff bracket where well, traditionally they've actually had pretty decent success. This is definitely, Durfee tends to be a second half team. Um, at least it's how it's been over the last few years. And in those non-conference games down the stretch leading towards Thanksgiving, they've done pretty well. Um, so these next two weeks are a good opportunity to get healthy, try to get through Brockton, and then... Um, I mean, honestly, at this point, shift your attention to New Bedford. Uh, you know, they steamrolled over New Bedford in, in the spring. Uh, it was a, really a historic margin of victory. Um, and, uh, you know, try to make sure that you can come out on Thanksgiving at home and put on a good show. So there's the inside scoop for you Hilltopper fans. That was Max on the carry. Gain of four. We can bring up second down and six. And Mercifully, we're in the fourth quarter, just over 11 and a half minutes to go. Indians well on their way to victory here tonight Merci on the home field. Mercifully, you're not having a good time? No, i <laughs> just like no, to get down to FaZe and have a cocktail. That, <laughs> that sounds really good. As Barry <laughs> Dutra got the call that time. FaZe is a great spot. Brian Hayden, Hayden made the tackle for Durfee High School. Is a penalty going to be called against the Indians, and that'll be a hold. Yep, coming back. We did the game here a couple of weeks ago. 
the referees call the penalty. It took just over nine minutes to decide what the call was and what the penalty was going to oh be. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Nine minutes. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, it was rough, all right. Were they the replacement refs from the NFL? Yeah, it could have been. They should have been. No offense. I'm just asking. No. You know. <laughs> Marks the ball carrier. We know what that circus was like nine years ago <laughs> or eight years ago, however many it was. Those first few weeks in the NFL were very rough. Well, one of the uh, issues I have with high school football, and I think a lot of coaches do as well, especially when you get in the playoffs, they have a system where they take care of their own. So uh -huh. if you're in your 60s, you're going to get the head job. There's a lot of guys in their 40s that are in great shape. They just don't give them the opportunity. It happens in basketball as well as Kelly mm -hmm. is hit in the backfield. Kelly's just lucky that he fell on that ball. Truthfully, was it a tuck rule situation? Because the arm was going forward. Of course, there's no instant replay here in high school except for our broadcasts, which we're going to see right now. <laughs> but uh, on the field, there are none. Let's see. Arm goes for Oh, no, yeah, that's a fumble. He just lost his grip. So no forward motion of the ball. Lucky to get that one back. So it'll bring up fourth down and 15 yards to go for Kelly. Rolls left, throws out there in the flats. Got a man, it's caught. And it's gonna be well short of the first down as he's taken down around the 13 yard line. Well, so Durfee getting the stop defensively. That'll turn it back over to the Hilltoppers. And I think the Indians are just happy to control the clock and try to run out the last nine plus minutes in this one. Now the question is, is Thomas gonna be back out there? Because he did, he had to come off the field. Came off the field at the end of that last series. I think that was him that just came in now. Is that Thomas? It is. Yeah. yeah. He was throwing his helmet on, so he definitely, he was definitely on the sideline with the trainer. And then made a late beeline to, uh, to the huddle here. Yeah, at this point, you just, you know, obviously, I, I'd like to see Durfee put together a drive at least just to boost some confidence for themselves. You know, you hate to see back-to-back -back shutouts, um, but you also don't want anybody else going down with a freak injury either with this game out of reach because it really is out of reach. Mm -hmm. So again, there's that fine line of, you know, you're not going to throw in the towel, that's for sure. But you know, do you play it safe or do you try to? You know, try to maybe make something happen here. Well, Thomas. Second and five for the Hillcock. That was a gain of uh, five as uh, second down and about five to go. To run it off the right side in the very Lewis capable hands of Lewis. And Lewis is tackled there right at the marker. And they're going to say he's got himself a first down. Evans uh, filling in for Paul Santos and Andrew Thompson. And he's taking over the, uh, like most people of Fall River, they're very bossy. He's telling the referee up here, you better change the, the quarter from third to fourth. And he's very alert. You, know, you have to give him credit, Doc. He's very alert. Keeping Doc Noons and I on our toes. Well, like you said, I'm the youngster up here. You so, both you certainly know. are. Your words, not mine. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, it's not the boss. It's, we take direction from the truck, and I take direction well. And they said, hey, scoreboard's messed up, and it's screwing up our line on the broadcast. So we fix it. Thomas, the Thomas out for a gain of 14, and the flag comes in. Don't fix what ain't broke, but if it's broke, you fix it. There you go. You take direction well, and you're not married, right? No. Okay. We went through this. Yeah, I know you did. We did. I just want to, you know, because people tune in at different times. Oh, okay. Trust me, if and when that day comes, you will learn how to take direction. So you'll be well schooled. Doc and I, we've been at it a long time, and when they say jump, we say how high. And at our age, it isn't very high. Well, that's a killer for Durfee right there. Once again, a... Nice gain turns into backpedaling. Uh, tough penalty, so the Hilltoppers backed up all the way to the 20-yard line. 
And 19, in fact, 19 yard line. First and 15 will replay the down. I think if you're the defensive coordinator for Dammuth, you just say, this key in on the quarterback is this young fella, Lewis, who came in somewhat highly touted. He's basically been defense well, but the quarterback in the second half, Thomas, yeah. he's shown some real athleticism. So you've got 11 guys keying on him. And every now and then he breaks out a solid run, but eventually they just run out of downs and lose possession of the football. Yeah, Thomas, is, Thomas has worked hard tonight. He's taken some big hits. And he'll talk, um, excuse me, the Indians have really done a good job at, you know, not really giving Lewis or the rest of the backs much to do. So at this point, much room to do their thing. So at this point, you're basically seeing everybody block and Thomas is looking for an open lane. Speaking of lanes, the fire lane looking more crowded again on the far side. We may see some flashing blue lights again before not. Oh, Thomas going to the Thomas. air. Throwing it down here to the 45-yard line. Called incomplete. That's strong, you know, strong with a little motion, like a little bit frustrated. Sure, he was hit before, but the fact of the matter is this was not a catchable ball by any stretch. He was not getting to it, and it was going out of bounds. So, yeah, you can be upset that this contact, but that's certainly not a penalty. That's the coach's son, Graham White, back there defending for the Indians. Mm -hmm. That's I saw his father's career, and... Young man, that's more than dad ever did. I'm just, don't tell him I said that, but. I don't have to tell him, it's on the record. It's now. on the record. We're live with, all, with our 50 viewers on YouTube. Of course, I think Rick played in one or two Super Bowls as a student athlete here. And he's been in a, on Colin Lynch's staff and uh, his own great coaching record here with Super Bowls here at Dammoth High School. Mm -hmm. Very fortunate to have a town resident, former player Lewis leading the, the program. Here's Lewis. He, Advances it out to the 35-yard line. Lewis dancing on this near side and able to get the first down. Um, probably his best run of the night, to be quite honest with you. This is what he does well. He's very, he's not the biggest player, but he's scrappy and fast. You know, so last year when we talked about Jason Hall and, you know, who, who departed uh, for prep school, we talked about him in, earlier in the broadcast. So the tandem between you know, 6'2", big power, fast running back to, you know, guy like Lewis, who is not the tallest or biggest, but he's even faster. There was a good compliment there. And Durfee's tried to get a little bit of that back by incorporating number three, Mick Cornell, into the mix as well. So you get that size of some of these plays. And it's worked pretty well. It worked better when you had Holly on the field as well, who is not suited up tonight. Because uh, then you have, it's basically like, you know, pick your poison. One side looks kind of buttoned up, you go to the other side. So you had that real nice um, complement and kind of tandem in the backfield. And right now, again, not at full strength, you're not seeing that. You're not seeing the full running game in effect here. Because last year, Jerfie did very well against Dartmouth. Um, well, they had one of the best players in the state. Right. The fellow you're talking about that went to prep school. Mm -hmm. And the line, the two linesmen I mentioned earlier too, Eli Robitaille and Sage Paradise, were like an immovable wall, those two guys, and they graduated. So there's there were major components to the offensive success coming into this year that I knew would have to be accounted for by somebody else. And it looked pretty good at the start of the year, but now again, as you start losing players with injuries, it's getting thin, you know. Here's Thomas, showing his athleticism and speed, picks up 11 and got himself a first down. Yeah. Moving the chains once again, Thomas. Cut down by Zach Sylvia and Graham White. Cut around, that's a nice seam up the middle there. And they hand it to the running back and he picks up a couple. Adrian Romero, we've Adrian seen Romero. him. Yep, he's been in quite a bit in the second half. Yeah. And again, another example too, I think of coach kind of maybe seeing what he's got for depth, trying some other guys as well. Coming up on five minutes to play here in the game.
Thomas spreads the field. Second down and long. Here comes the rush and Thomas rolls away from it. Still looking for running room. Sneaks over to the sideline and gets himself a solid gain of six or seven. I didn't think he was going to really get much there at all in that last cut. He was able to get a little burst of speed at, at the very least, get across the line of scrimmage. I wasn't sure if he was going to get there, but he did. And it'll be... Uh, I'm going to say he stepped out of bounds a couple yards. Yeah, about right had him mocked out. So it'll bring up about third down, five yards to go. Clock is stopped. Indians on top, 28 to nothing. It's been the Will Kelly show, three touchdowns mm -hmm. by the... Indian quarterback. They were easy, too. They were easy touchdowns. I mean, he, he good blocking, and uh, like you said, we ISO'd it uh, earlier in the game. Everybody focused on Marks, and Kelly just kind of had his way with the defense. Well, upcoming games here, uh, conference play the rest of the way for the Indians next week from right here at the stadium. Bridgewater Rainham comes to town, 7 o'clock, of course. And then nearby New Bedford, the Indians will finish on the road on the 29th Halloween weekend. Nothing scary about that if the Indians play the way they are tonight against New Bedford. For Durfee, they're off next week. They have one extra game under their belt already. Compared to Dartmouth, they have the bye next week. They'll finish at Brockton on the 30th, or on the 29th, Thomas pardon me. Pass. Thomas's pass falls incomplete. That was... Jaden Lewis down there at the five yard line. Just outside his long stretch and he's down again. He's only down there at the 10 yard line. He's struggled this game health wise and that ball nearly completed. And they run out to get Lewis and looks like he's gonna be okay. And I think you'll see Coach White sub in a lot of the JV kids here with just under four minutes to go, up by four touchdowns. You see him telling the coaches, mm -hmm. put Doc Noons in. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a smart move, and this is something that you see often when the score is lopsided. It, it's, again, it's, it's, it's the play smart. You don't need any more points. You certainly don't need any freak injuries. Dartmouth's, you know, three and one, gonna be four and one. Chase Fenno in at quarterback. Chase Fenno in at quarterback for the Indians. Now we gotta go to the old roster. <laughs> and then he turns and hands it off to Jared Abreu. Abreu ran right into the hands of Devin Ferreira. Short gain of one. Three and a half to go in the ball game. Got a Red Sox score there? Uh, no, I just saw that uh, Miami has beaten the Celtics 121 to 100. Tatum's 23 points, not enough. Fenno off the ball fake. Pushes the pile down here to the 45-yard line. Uh, give the offense an opportunity of third down and four. More subs coming in for the Indians along the offensive line. And of course, Durfee came into this game with a rash of injuries. Mm. Yep, down six starters to start tonight. Indians on the hilltop of 45 yard line. You mentioned the Sox uh, had Felger and Maz on earlier this afternoon, uh, 985. And uh, Maz brought up some good points, and the Sox can stay close in a game. Houston's under 500 in two run or less ball games. Well, and the Sox actually have thrived in those situations. Why? Because they've had to come back so many times because the bullpen has blown it. Not in the boat season, but um, that happened a lot during the regular season. So be um, you know, if you can keep it competitive and get into the pen, um, I think that's where the Sox are going to, you know, maybe have some success. But the bottom line is they've exceeded, I think, expectations. And, um, you know, you got past the Yankees, you got past the Rays. If you can get a split in Houston, that would be huge. Um, but, you know, I think Houston is going to be a very tough opponent. Well, 
Putting it on the far side into the ball game now is Jason Martin. Yeah, no gain. He's gonna go down as a loss. Coach White just for a loss. Playing a lot of the younger kids, giving them an opportunity to play under the, under the lights. Yeah, we're gonna part roll. of a big home crowd. Rolling up on the final 90 seconds here, Jim. Time with coaches coming down from upstairs. Got to be happy with the with the victory here tonight, Coach Rossi, Coach Zexter. Damian just content on just handing it into the belly of Abreu and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Run to one minute to go. Evan, we hope you've had fun on the broadcast. It was great having you alongside. Yeah, it sure was. I, I mean, geez, I've been calling games for a DC TV since January 2014, and you and I have never done a game. It's been almost eight years. That's crazy. Well, I have to be honest. I didn't want to be paired with you, so. Yeah, I know. Well, thanks for sending Paul on vacation <laughs> so I could actually get in here. No, it's been a real blast. <laughs> oh, you, you know, I listen, this is a nice run here by the Indians. Sure is. One of the backup players. And that's J.T. Sharia. No, you do a lot of good work uh, doing games uh, throughout the week, taking uh, taking time away from your busy schedule. I know you do soccer and girls' athletics as well. and Do it all. You do it all here for Football, DC TV. soccer, field hockey, volleyball, basketball. The only thing I haven't done is hockey. I haven't done a game with Paul yet either, and I, I want to try to recruit him for... Uh, Maybe the Durfee Dartmouth game that's at Driscoll in in, in the winter. So Paul, Paul, if you're watching, expect a phone call. <laughs> we'll see what we get. Well, the final score here from the stadium is Dartmouth High School 28. Durfee nothing. The Indians up their record to five and one. Durfee drops to one and five. Your final 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Well, you know, the Hilltoppers need to take advantage of the bye week this week. That's the bottom line. they got to get healthy, and uh, they'll have plenty of time to look at Brockton. There's plenty of tape out there, and, uh, you know, try to go and bounce back from back-to-back -back shutouts. Eight quarters, and uh, being outscored 71. Am I doing the math right? 79. No, 69 here. 69 nothing over the last two games. That's a... Uh, that's a rough go of it. For, for sure, but it's been uh, great. And I mean in all sincerity, it was great to meet you tonight. Absolutely. And uh, someone that uh, has been around cable TV in this town for about 25 years calling basketball and football games. It's always to meet someone nice, someone that wants to, uh, to do this part-time, someone that gives their, their time to student athletes Mm. Uh, I think that's uh, quite a character trait in you and others that do this. Um, you know, there's a lot of parents that can't get to games. You know, society's kind of up and down. It's, sure. People are working crazy hours, especially during uh, this pandemic time. Uh, it's nice to see the, the crowds out here um, to see high school football once again. So I want to thank you, you for uh, filling in for Paul, and you're welcome back anytime. Thank you, anytime. Jim. Anytime. Yeah. It was my uh, pleasure to... Uh, Sit alongside. A final score here from the stadium. Dartmouth High School 28, Durfee High School nothing. For the entire staff at DC TV and all you people watching on YouTube, we thank you. For my broadcast partner, Evan Masood, I'm Jim Thompson. Until next time, so long, everybody.